Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Hope you all are enjoying this Feast of Unleavened Bread, this time of giving praise and glory unto Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya, Amen. the Alahayam of Alahayams. Today we're going to go into some more understanding of the feast and the events. Alahayam has shown that Yachek was actually the Passover. And now we'd like to look at the communion or what is known as Adonis Supper so we can further understand what it truly means to partake in communion and what, and what it means to really examine ourselves as well. And let's pick up from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of Adonai that which also I deliver unto you, that Adonai Yache, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drank it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show Adonai's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of Adonai unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of Adonai. Now, we know Hebrews chapter 10, about verse 26. And going down, some talks about trotting underfoot the blood of the son of Elohim. Right. We definitely want to understand what it means to eat or to drink unworthily. All right. Let's look at Acts of Peter. Chapter 2, to understand what it means to eat or drink unworthily. If you do not have this book, please visit the website and right. you can download it for free according to Ahaya's Grace. So if, you, if you don't see the link below, you can always type in uh, Hebrew Readers Church or Hebrew Readers Wix, W-I-X, and it'll pull up usually about the third tab or so. Hmm. Right. Acts of Peter, Chapter 2. Now they brought up unto Paul bread and water for the sacrifice, that he might make prayer and distribute it to everyone. So they came to do the sacrifice. This is a done supper, right? Among whom it befell that a woman named Rufina desired she also to receive the Eucharist at the hands of Paul, to whom Paul, filled with the spirit of Elohim, said as she drew near, Rufina, Thou comest not worthily unto the altar of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Remember that blood had to get sprinkled on the altar? Right. The law had got changed from Exodus, right? From sprinkling it on the doorpost. Right. Then in Deuteronomy 6, Teen, it went to, uh, and then Jubilees chapter 49, it went to sprinkling it on the altar at the temple, right? right. And Allah showed that there's no sacrifice to go to at the physical temple. And now here we are having scriptural understanding and validation that this communion is coming to the altar of Allah to sprinkle the blood of Yahweh on our hearts. Right. right? This was the Holy Spirit talking. He said he was filled with the spirit of Allah Right? right? Rafina, thou comest not worthily unto the altar of Allah Arising from beside one that is not thy husband, but an adulterer, and assayest to receive the Eucharist of Elohim, for behold, Satan shall trouble thine heart and cast thee down in the sight of all them that believe in Adonai. So we see she was still in iniquity and came right. to partake in the Ache's sacrifice. As it said in Corinthians, if one does that, one is guilty of the body and blood of Adana. So to partake in communion while committing iniquity, right. whether committing sin outwardly as literally committing fornication or adultery, or even within heart, operating in the lust of the flesh, bearing malice or guile or bitterness towards someone, we're killing Yachi again because these lusts of the flesh and breaking of the commandments is what got him killed in the first place. Hence, we would be murderers of him as well if we come to him while still walking in these things. That's exactly what Paul was talking about. He said, if many have come to Meshiach through my sin, 
Why am I being persecuted? You remember that part? In Romans chapter 3. Yeah. So you can see that if you're continuing in sin, you're literally trampling Yahweh underfoot because you're pretty much undoing everything that he came to do. He came to take sin out of the world, and you're sinning and trying to partake in him at the same time. You're right. Can you go to Galatians chapter 2 as well? There's a precept there that's going to put it in context. Verse 17. Galatians 2 and 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Mashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners. So she was still sinning, but wanted to be justified by Mashiach, right? Because right? wanted to come partake in his sacrifice, right? If therefore Mashiach, the minister of sin, I forbid. All right, continue. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. The building up of sin that I committed is what brought the need for Yahshua to be crucified. Right. Therefore, if I go back to that, I'm transgressing again because Yahshua already died so that I may live. Right. Right? Continue. For I through the law am dead to the law. Now that Yahshua has atoned for my sins, now I'm free from that law of sin and death. Now, what brother had mentioned in Romans, Paul said in Romans chapter 3, verse 7, for if the truth of Allah hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, now this is, notice, this is a slander he's going to say, as some affirm that we say. So some people are lying and saying that we're saying this. Let us do evil that good may come. Right. The war religion say we can sin. It's okay. Good is still going to come. We are going to be delivered. Right. That is a slander. As Paul was attesting, and he said, whose damnation is just? That concept that we can sin and it's going to be okay, right. that's a slander and it's a lie. Right. And that's going to get a lot of people killed. It's full it, damnation is just. Because they, we did not believe the truth, did not receive it. So you know what I'm saying? Why is just, all right? This. I'm back in the Acts of Peter. That they would see and believe may know that they have believed in the living Eliam, the searcher of hearts, but if thou repent of thy act, he is faithful that is able to blot out thy sin and set thee free from this sin. But if thou repent not, when thou art yet in the body, devouring fire and outer darkness shall receive thee forever. Mm. And so, it, we see that we have to work righteous. We have to bring forth fruit. There's no continuing in it. The Holy Spirit in Paul testified you need to repent. And if you don't repent, she told us she's going to burn. And may we be admonished this day. We have to repent, brothers and sisters. For well, the same faith awaits us, Jew and Gentile. It's interesting because he even clarifies why people have nightmares. It's because their sins could be said. But if thou repent not while thou art yet in the body, that means you're still alive. Mm -hmm. The vow and fire and outer darkness shall receive thee forever. So you can see you, you're having nightmares because you're seeing the things that are going to happen to you. Oh, yes. That's, people do know why they're dying when it's coming. Right. Yes. yes. May we be encouraged to turn from these things, not partake in this destruction to come. And immediately Rafina fell down, being stricken with palsy from her head unto the nails of her feet. And she had no power to speak given her, for her tongue was bound. And when both they that believed in the faith and the Neophilites saw it, they beat their breasts, remembering their old sins, and mourned and said, We know not if Elohim would forgive the former sins which we have committed. Look at the humility of the church members. Right. They didn't look at her like, see, she knows she wrong. Right. They didn't look at her in that way. They beat their own breast because the scripture talks about the love where we bear one another's burden. Right. They looked at her like, man, what about us? Like right. everybody was sincere. Like, what are we going to do? That's how much they wanted to get it right. 
they didn't look at her like with pride like see that's i wouldn't do that i would I, yeah, that's what she get right yeah, like, they were sincere didn't they didn't it wasn't a good thing for them to see her get hurt right right then paul called for silence and said men and brethren which now have begun to believe on messiaka you know this is a process you've begun to believe we have this a striving working with a perfect heart to get onto the goal right if ye continue not in your former works of the traditions of your fathers and keep yourself from all guile and wrath and fierceness and adultery and defilement and from pride and envy and contempt and enmity. Yahshua, the living Allah, will forgive you that ye did in ignorance. So if we, can, if we continue striving forward, he will forgive us. But if we hold, no, he said the traditions of our fathers. All right. Now these were Israelites and Gentiles there. And it's interesting that you first you have the law of animal sacrifice which we were taught not to trust in because we trust in Yache now and here we are today the traditions of our fathers our fathers inherited lies Jew and Gentile right. so we have to put away everything that we learned from our former life and go towards the goal of Allah Hayyam. because you can see that the things that we've learned in this life they're right there guile, wrath fierceness, adultery, defilement, right. with all the abominations we eat and the uncleanness we speak, and from pride, which is, that's the culture of the world, and right. envy, and contempt, and enmity. This is what we've grown up in. So we can see that if we go away from these things and continue going toward Yache and continue not in the formal works, Yache will forgive us. It also shows you who, who was ruling during that time. Because if we're doing all these things today, where do we learn them from? Satan. Right. Under the hand of Rome. Right. Because where were they at? Rome. Right. We are under the culture of the Greeks and the Romans. Right. So you can see where we're battling the same things as what they were battling. Right. Yeah. It's the same spirits. Wherefore, ye servants of Elohim, arm yourself, every one in your inner man, with peace, patience, gentleness, faith, charity, knowledge, wisdom, love of the brethren, hospitality, mercy, abstinence, chastity, kindness, justice. Then shall ye have your guide everlasting, the first begotten of all creation, and shall have strength and peace with our Adonai. And when they had heard these things of Paul, they besought him to pray for them. And Paul lifted up his voice and said, O eternal Elohim, Elohim of heavens, Elohim of unspeakable majesty, who has established all things by thy word, who has bound upon all the world the chain of thy grace, father of thy holy son, Yahshua Meshiach, we together pray thee, through thy son Yahshua Meshiach, strengthen the souls which were before unbelieving, but are now faithful. Once I was a blasphemer, now am I blasphemed. Once I was a persecutor, now do I suffer persecution of others. Once I was the enemy of Meshiach, now I pray that I may be found his friend. And that shows there's no pride in this. Even know that Paul turned he still prayed that he'd be made his friend. And we know to be his friend, you have to keep his commandments. Right. He said that in John chapter 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. That was chapter 14, I believe. And then chapter 15, he said, you are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. Right. So we know Paul was praying to keep the law, praying to be kept in the faith. So his exhortation and understanding that the gospel the true gospel, we actually have to keep the law and get to the perfection to become the image of the Son of Allah. I am. All right. For I trust in his promise and in his mercy. I account myself faithful and that I have received forgiveness of my former sins. And that's not, you see, he's not letting the guilt come back. All right. He's accepted, I have an atonement in Yahche. Trusting in that, not feeling that he's going to be in trouble for what he did formerly. But trusting and knowing that if I do all things unto Adon Yache, then he shall be my guide. All right? Wherefore I exhort you also, brethren, 
to believe in Ahaya, the Father Almighty, and to put all your trust in our Dono Yachi Mashiach and his son, believing in him, and no man shall be able to uproot you from his promise. These words are true. Now that we understand what it means to be worthy of the body of Adonah, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28 to 32. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth the, and drinketh damnation to himself, not the son and Adonai's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And that woman was a testimony that if she would judge herself and realize what she was doing was wrong and change it, she would not have gotten in trouble right there. All right. But when we are judged, we are chastened of Adonai, that we should not be condemned with the world. He chastens those whom he loves as a father chastens the son. And this is for our profit. So it's a great admonition for us. Yeah. Even David said, it's like, it's like oil poured upon my head. If you can find it, that's a great edification. repertoire right here. I'm trying to keep my stuff together. <laughs> That Psalms you were looking for. You found it? Yes, I am sure that it was 141 and 5. I just got there. Ah. <laughs> Praise Ahia. It says uh, Psalms 141 and 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. So when we're chastened, we're being chastened by the law. As he talks about, let a righteous man smite me. We are chastened of Adonah that we should not be condemned with the world. That's why it shall be like a fine oil. Because right. it's just purifying us. Right. He's anointing us with righteousness until we become fully endowed in the law. This is the wonderful mercy of the Father chasing us and nourishing us as dear children. And he's doing it in tender mercy because he hasn't killed us. Right. But he's giving us admonition, showing us you, we have to be very diligent. When things are happening, they're not just happening just cause. We have to pay attention and look for the signs of that we're going in the right direction or that we're going in the wrong direction. Right. So now we understand that communion is wonderful to see. This is an exhortation to see. We can rejoice and feast, but we need to understand the goal. We need to understand the end goal. The end of the law of righteousness for them that believe, which is Yaje, right. that will give us life if we cleave and keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit. We have that testimony in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14 to 19, and then chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partake of the Messiah if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Because the beginning was, I believe in Yahweh. Right. He is the atonement for my sins. I'm not sinning anymore. I have an atonement of my former sins, and I'm going to live a life unto Allah. That's the beginning of our faith. That's the first love. That when you read the book of uh, Revelations, the Church of Ephesians, that first love, that sincere zeal for righteousness, knowing that you have an atonement. Well, it said... Today, if you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as the provocation. Here we are, brothers and sisters, this day, and these scriptures are still true. We have the opportunity to turn. We've heard what the true gospel is, the law of the spirit of life. And we ought not to harden our hearts and think that this is not the way or that the truth is somewhere else. This is the true gospel. Right. This is it. The kingdom is at hand. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Mushi. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And was it not with them that had sinned? Do we not see, brothers and sisters? He was grieved with them that sinned before. Right. 
he still agrees with our sins now. <laughs> he still agrees with it. And now that we know this, we ought not to sin because we want to please the Father. We're his servants. We want to do what is right in his sight. So we cease from sin. Jew and Gentile, because he's the Elohim of all. This is the testimonies for us to know we must change. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. Hope you'll be encouraged to be believers now in all things. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Here we are this day. We shall not enter in if we in unbelief. Can you please read Revelations 22, verse 14? Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So we see the ones that sinned in unbelief are not entering into the rest. On the opposite end, blessed are those that keep his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and enter into the gates of the city. All right, continue. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All those things are acts of unbelief. And now let's close out with Hebrews 4, verse 1 and 2, please. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us, of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of. There we see. Let us operate in fear. They're fear and trembling. Even the Romans, they were in fear. Like, what about us? What are we going to do? Right. That sincerity that we want to attain unto this because we don't want to fall short of this and that lets us know we have to get to perfection. We cannot fall short and then make it. Right. We actually have to attain unto it. Right. right, continue. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So they would preach the gospel as well. Right. What did he tell them that was the gospel? It's quite amazing. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, we can't stop there because the word was preached to them. They received the gospel. What was that gospel that they received? Can you go to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 22 and 23? <laughs> For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in that day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your Elohim, and ye shall be my people. That's the gospel. Right. Obey his voice. Yahweh is his voice. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. Walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. This is the covenant. He commanded us to love our brother as ourselves. Right. These are the fruits of the law. And now here we are today that he revealed the gospel to even give us more admonitions with knowing the fruits of the Spirit. Right. We have the same opportunity. So therefore, may we be encouraged to be believers, to obey his voice. This is the covenant. This is the true gospel. Anything else? I'm good. I think we went in the hermits already on, on something close to this. So. No. I have you magnified. All right. Ciao. Ciao.